Eileen Malone, foster carer. Tommy Malone, foster carer. And here we are in your house this morning. Nice and quiet. A very quiet house. It's not necessarily always like this. No. <laughs> very seldom like this. And you've been fostering, what, for 20... 25 years. And coming, you're thinking of retiring. Well, you are no, we're, retired. We've retired. retired now, yeah, so you're yeah, retired. Yeah. How did you first get into it? Um, well, believe it or not, there used to be a programme on the television called, I think it was called Find Me a Family, and it was to get foster carers in England. And they had these five children and five brothers and sisters whose parents had been killed in a car crash, and they wanted someone to take the five of them. And I felt like we were the only people in the world who could take these five kids because we had a lot of bedrooms. And I couldn't sleep that night worrying about these children. And the next day when we looked at thousands of people had come forward to take the five of them. And we thought, oh, thank God. But then we thought, well, we could be doing this. We've got a lot of room. We had three boys of our own who were young. We thought, yeah, we could, be, we could do this. And we just went for it. And we've really enjoyed every minute of it, or most minutes of it. Yeah. Can it be challenging? Very challenging, but very rewarding as well. You get some children who just click and they just fit into the family and you feel like they're your own children. You get some that are difficult, really difficult, and it's very hard to deal with them sometimes. But there's always help from the foster service, always help. We've had to call on them quite a lot with children who we just didn't know what to do. Because you could tear your hair out because you think, I don't know what to do. Because you think, I think a lot of people think, oh, well, I've, I've given, given these children a nice home. I'm looking after them. They should be fine. But they're not. Because they've suffered so much. Because very few children are in foster care because of what they've done. It's because of what's been done to them yeah. by the families or whoever. And they need help. They really do. And it's so rewarding to have them. It's, it's brilliant. And what about you, Tommy? We're hearing about the rewarding. What have you got out of it over the years? Um, just, just seeing children um, develop um, and get on, just have a normal life, just get on with their lives and... See when when they when they leave us, you know they they they, they they've come on a, a lot, and we've helped them along the way to um, well to adults, you know, and being adults and you know just a normal normal life, you know. How many children have been through this lovely house over the years? Uh, roughly, I would say about twenty, about twenty. Um, different different uh, stages we've had. Um, five, five that are, we we still see now mm-hmm. who long term, long term um, has been with us a long time. You know, we still we still have them now. They still come and see us and all that. You know what I mean? We were hearing before uh, someone who came mom, here as a young lad and still here. <laughs> yeah, we're still we're still mum and dad. We're still mum and dad to them. You know, although they've grown up now, they've gone off and they've got families of their own. You know. They, call, they, they call, still come and see us, they, you know. They, so they drop around even when they've oh, yes. moved on? Yes, yeah, so they, they come around all the time, you know, to see us, a bit, which is lovely, you know. And that's the nice part of it, you know, seeing them come on. Well, their children call us Nana and Grandad. So we've got, especially the one in New Zealand, She's she phones every week, does a video call with a little girl who's coming up to two, and she calls us Nana, and, you know, she's they're just part of our family. And it's, it's lovely, it really is. What do you think is the secret ingredient then to being a good foster parent? I think it's just accepting them for what they are. You know they're not going to be perfect. They're going to have problems. And just help them to be to realise what a family is because some of these children don't know what a proper family is. They don't know how to be part of a family because they've never been part of a family. And so when they grow up, if, if they don't go into care and get helped, they just carry on. Because I think whatever you do, whatever life you live as a child, it's normal to you. It doesn't matter how mad it is. To you, it's normal. So you think that's what pe- families do. So if you come into a family which is reasonably normal and reasonably caring and help each other, it makes them realise that there is a different way to live. And it, it does seem to work. I don't know, we, we've just never had... We've never we've had a couple of children that we've thought, no, we can't help this child, they need more help than we can give them. But then we've had to say, oh, you hold our hands up and say, no, we, we can't do this, because this they can upset the other members of the family. But I'd say... 99.5% or 99.5% have they've just reacted well. I mean, some of them we've had. One particular boy, he came and it was like, there's no way you're going to be able to manage him. He was 14, he was aggressive, he was hated everybody, hated the world, didn't go to school, didn't do anything. He came to us and from the minute he came, he clicked onto our, our youngest son was at university at the time, but he was home. And they just clicked together, didn't they? Yeah. And he, he's amazing now. He's, he's got a really good career. He's got a lovely girlfriend. 
He's, and you, you think he would have ended up definitely in prison. He used to say when he was young, oh, when I'm in prison, I'll do this. And I, well, why are you going to prison? Well, I will go to prison, won't I? I said, no, not an hour watch, you won't. And he didn't. <laughs> he, by his fingernails, he didn't a couple of times, but he didn't. And it's great to see that, it really is. And you had children of your own as well? Yes, three boys. And how did they get on then when, when the foster children came in? Well, they were fine, because I think your children sort of foster as well, don't they? Because... A lot of the children we've had have clicked on to one of our children and sort of, because they don't want to be looking at adults, you know, the adults aren't cool. So they've sort of gone more to the children. And our kids have been great with them, really great. We've been very lucky that our children were okay. We couldn't have done it if they weren't. We couldn't have done it. It would have been unfair to them. But it's been good. I say we've had some that they've thought, oh, no, you know, this isn't working. And and we've held our hands up and said, no, they'll have to go. And they had, I think we've only had two that we've said that, haven't we, over the years, yeah. that, no, th- th- this isn't working out. But there's always the fostering service there to help you. To actually give it back yeah. up. And it's been the same for you, Tommy. It's been very much a sort of a, a family um, a family programme, I suppose, or a sort of family outing. It's everyone together. Yes, yes, yes. Well, when, obviously, when we first started, um, you've got to sit your own, own children down and, and you know, because they're got, going to be part of it. Mm-hmm. So you've got to say to them, you know, what, what we're thinking about doing this, what do you think? And... Uh, the, the boys have been absolutely brilliant. They've just, yeah, mum, yeah, dad, you know, crack on. And uh, they've, they've helped so much, you know, over the years when we've had these children in. They've bonded with some sort of some of the children and that and really helped us along, along the way with them, you know. So what would you say then to anyone? Because obviously there's a campaign going now to try and get more people interested in fostering. It's essential for the Isle of Man, obviously, to have people like yourselves. What would you say to someone who might have been thinking... Could I foster? You know, is it? I don't know that I could do it. What would you say? Well, if, if if they're that way inclined to thinking about it, then obviously they will be able to do it. If that if it's in the, if it's in the mind already, you know, I think they're halfway there. Um, and the rewards that they will get from it, really nice. You know, when you see children come on, and I I, I would I, I would um, say to people, you know, if you're thinking about it, you know. I would do it definitely, definitely. The reward, the rewards are great. They really are. You know, you see children coming on. You know, there's so many children out there at the moment who are suffering. You know, and um, it's nice to see to bring children on. And what about you, Eileen? Would you have any words of wisdom for someone who might be thinking, "Well, I could do, but oh, I don't know. It looks like a big challenge." I would just say the same as Tommy. If you're thinking about it, you're obviously a very empathetic person. And you, I think you, you should. You, you only you only know if you do it. If you, you're only going to know what it's like doing it. Thinking about it doesn't help do it. And if you can't do it, just say, "Well, I can't do it. It's not for me." But it's lovely. I mean, I met a girl who we fostered. Oh, she was 14. She's now about 36. So 20 years ago, and I met her in town a while ago. And she gave me a hug and she went, "Oh, you smell just the same as you did." Yeah. And I did have the same perfume on. I've got a signature perfume. And I thought that was lovely that she'd remembered all those years. And she was only here, I'd say three months and she still comes she comes every year to see us at, at Christmas and she's got a little girl and she brings a little girl with her and it, it's lovely you, you do you make a big impression on these children and they need it because they've had such disorganized lives such hectic lives they don't know what being part of a family is and it's lovely to see that they can this particular girl in New Zealand the one who we're really close to she always says if it wasn't for us she'd have either been dead or pregnant at about 15 or dead from drugs, because she was just running wild. Her mum wasn't well, and she had no guidance whatsoever, and she just ran around. She used to sleep out in the rose gardens across the road at night when she was about 10 or 11, because there was nobody there to to stop her doing it. Mm-hmm. And it, it's so sad when you see them, and then you see how they come on, and you, you, you do feel proud, you feel proud of yourself that you've done it. But I say your children have to be involved as well. They have to, if you've got your own children, they need to be part of it. Because it's if they don't like it, you, you, obviously you've got to put them first, and if they, they're not happy with it. But I would I would advise anybody to give it a go if you if you feel you you want to do it, because it's and it makes your own children realise, you know, you're not as bad as they thought, because they're all the same. They're all, they're all, our kids were the only kids who'd never been to Florida, and the only kids who didn't have Sky, and the only kids who did. And then once they saw these children and realised the lives they were coming from, I think they realised, and it's made them more caring mm. as well. They're, they're definitely. I don't know if any of our children will foster, but the, the, the young one in New Zealand says she will. Once she's settled, she, she will foster. So, you know, it, it carries on. But it's lovely to see that these children are re- learning about family life. 
Are you going to miss it? Yes, yes, we will. We must be part of it, definitely. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, we at first we were thinking of still being involved in some way, and then we thought, no, we, it is a big commitment. It, it is a big commitment, and we thought, no, we've done enough, and we need to see our children. We've got four grandchildren over here, and then two in Manchester, and then the one in New Zealand. So we want to be part of their lives now as well, and be able to free to, free to go when we want to go. If this COVID ever ends, we'll be able to do that. <laughs> And we've got um, Sharon just over here as well. You're saying about uh, support and the backup. It sounds like that's absolutely vital for fosterers to have that backup and support there. They can call them when they need it. Yeah, we've got an out of hours um, emergency line that gives advice and support. Um, and uh, we're there. There's always someone on duty in the office every day. And uh, yeah, so, um, you know, whenever foster carers need extra support um, sometimes it's not immediate but we we do try and get out and uh, give some advice if we can and we are now obviously there's a campaign now to try and get more people like uh, Tommy and Eileen interested what should people do in the first instance if they're thinking about becoming a fosterer um, so we're looking for particular kind of people we're looking for people that uh, where one of the um, applicants can be at home during the day so we're, we're looking at that now um, we're looking at people that have got um, a realistic idea of what some of the children who are in care what ca- kind of um, issues they might have um, so you know they're, they're, they do come with their, their own baggage and um, and so there is uh, parenting plus it's it's kind of harder than parenting so it's not just good parents that we we need although sometimes that is a great um indication of how they would be with other children um so yeah so really we do need they do need to be um extra special and an extra special kind of family uh the children in the family obviously like Tommy and Eileen have said need to be on board and um and I think it is rewarding but it can also be quite tough so people need to be prepared for that Absolutely. So is there a good contact number in the first instance to get in contact or email or just get in contact with the department? So we um, so the family placement service phone number is six one zero 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 zero. And that's a good place to start. And uh, we'll be taking um, information on the phone, sending out packs, information about our information evening, um, which, uh, you know, if you just need to know a little bit more, you can come along to and you it will either um, whet your appetite even more or you might decide, actually, that's not for me. And that's fine. Um, if you decide it's not for you, it, it really isn't for everybody. So 